Hey folks, welcome back to Ed's Garage at Bannister Hyundai. Today I want to talk about Apple CarPlay and how to use it. Maybe show you some tips and tricks and some little things about it that you may not have seen before. Uh, I've actually borrowed a Apple iPhone from a coworker because um, I have an Android phone. So if you're uh, potentially looking at switching to an Android phone in the near future, I've also got a how-to on Android Auto. And of course, Android Auto just got updated, so it's a little bit different as well. That's all in the video, but uh, yeah. Let's uh, have a look at Apple CarPlay. All right, so when you first start up your vehicle and you have your Apple iPhone connected, uh, this, of course, vehicle is a 2023 Hyundai Elantra with wireless Apple CarPlay. So basically, we just connect it to Bluetooth, and then uh, as soon as it's finished with Bluetooth, it says, do you want to use CarPlay? You say yes. Uh, one of the things to remember, guys, you do need to have Siri enabled on your phone for CarPlay to work properly. Uh, and of course, that is now accessible from the button on the steering wheel. And one thing to point out, with the steering wheel button, if your vehicle already has built-in voice recognition, you may have to hold the voice recognition button to access Siri, um, because if you press and release, it'll probably just use the built-in uh, voice recognition. So hold it down or press and release if you don't have built-in voice recognition in your vehicle. All right, so looking at the main sort of startup screen of Apple CarPlay, uh, you can see on the bottom left-hand corner, we've got an icon here, which will switch us to our all apps section. Uh, you can also get there by simply swiping left from this screen, so just like that. Uh, so you don't necessarily need to hit that button there. You notice the button has changed now because it'll of course take us back to the little mini split screen. Um, on the left here, we've got, uh, currently we've got Apple, or sorry, Google Maps. Uh, so an Apple iPhone of course has the option to use Apple Maps or Google Maps. Uh, my coworker clearly uses Google Maps most of the time. But for, so for this video, we're just gonna be focusing mainly on Apple Maps because of course, every single iPhone has Apple Maps pre-installed. But we'll talk about that in a little bit. So you notice on the right hand side, we have our now playing. So that's the last application that, um, well, that's Alec that used it. So this is the last application that Alec used to play music from his cell phone. So we can quickly just jump into that. You can also tap this, brings up the whole screen and you can see the last song that was playing. If I hit the back button, it takes us to the, um, basically the section where we can choose what music we wanna play. You can also use Siri uh, to access the music on your phone as well and choose a song, that sort of thing. So that's just the, the now playing. It's basically iTunes. Um, so if I hit the iTunes icon, nothing happens because that's what we're looking at right now. If I hit it now, it takes us back into there. Now, however, the now playing is the last app that you're using. So if the last app you're using was not iTunes, then when you tap that, it'll bring up that particular app. Let's say, uh, you know, VLC Media Player or something like that. Um, not being familiar with iPhones, I don't know what other, you know, music apps you can use, but generally there's gonna be uh, other applications that you can download on the App Store that are compatible with CarPlay. Not everything is, so you, you're not gonna find things like games and whatnot uh, that are on your cell phone on this screen. Those things are not gonna be compatible. But generally, music playback, so you can see here we got JR, uh, FM. We have uh, Skype, so that's uh, text and voice. Um, Microsoft Teams, so you know audio, um, audio meetings and whatnot can be done through here as well. Um, you got Waze, so Waze is a mapping software similar to, uh, to Google and Apple Maps. Uh, a little bit more information about like police radar and stuff like that, so it's pretty cool. Uh, but again, so all sort of messaging apps like WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, Skype, you know, those types of things will all work within this uh, system. So it's pretty cool. Zoom as well. All right, um, we're gonna start um, basically from the left and work our ways to the right. So you can see here on the left, you got our our clock and the current connection, LTE, the battery level of the phone, a few quick connections, or, or sorry, quick um, quick access icons here for applications that are used most often. And then of course you have the all apps button, as I mentioned before. Now, if we swipe on over here, we can see we've got our phone that we can go to uh, to place phone calls and whatnot and look through contact lists. Uh, there's the music there, so that's gonna be iTunes. Um, we got the Apple Maps Messenger. So if you get a message, of course, this will read it out to you. Um, you can also tap on this and kind of, you know, go through the last messages. Uh, so here's a message that I sent him earlier. So if I tap that. What do you want to say to Edward? Okay, no problem. It says, okay, no problem. And now I can send that. So the reason it's showing up like this is because he's already saw, like he's already seen the message uh, and he's already heard the message. So it doesn't actually um, read out the message, but you notice this one here, he hasn't seen. I won't, I won't actually look at his messages, but essentially it'll read out the message. And then of course you can go new message here. Who do you want to message? 
and we'll just leave that for now because that's all voice activated. So pretty easy to use, but you don't necessarily need to go into that. You can just hit the voice recognition on the button or on the uh, steering wheel. Send a text to Edward. What do you want to say to Edward? And we'll just cancel that. So of course you can just speak it out and then it'll allow you, uh, allow you to send that message. If you receive a text message, regardless of what screen you're on, a little bar will come along the top of the screen. You tap it and it'll play out the message to which you can then reply by voice. Really, really quite simple and easy to use. Now, if you see an icon on your Apple CarPlay that is the brand of the vehicle that you're in, that's basically just to take you back to the regular sort of uh, built-in stereo stuff for the car. So what we're looking at right now is all coming directly from this vehicle. And then this is the CarPlay, which is coming directly from the cell phone. Uh, podcasts are pretty obvious, so it gives you streaming podcasts. Same with audiobooks, streaming audiobooks. We've got our calendar here, so we can open that up. Brings up any events that are scheduled for today in your Apple calendar. Uh, settings allows you to change a few things within the, um, the CarPlay um, uh, ecosystem here. So if I go to wallpaper, I can mess with Alec a little bit and, and you know put a different wallpaper on. So I'm going to choose this one here. So now you can see behind the icons, it's going to look a little bit different. So we've done that now, and there's our wallpaper in there. Pretty cool. Um, unfortunately, you can't load in custom wallpapers, just the ones that comes with the vehicle. It's funny that, uh, you know, I actually just did the video on Android Auto, and it's amazing the uh, comparisons here because there's a lot of similarities. Uh, Audible is another uh, book reading uh, app, uh, as is audiobooks here, so clearly um, he has a affinity to uh, listening to audiobooks. Now, Google Maps can be used from here. Now, what it can't do, though, is if I were to use the voice recognition on the steering wheel here, uh, that's going to access the Apple map. So if I hit it now and try to navigate somewhere, navigate to Walmart in Chilliwack. One option I found is Walmart Supercenter okay. on Eagle Landing Cup. So you'll notice that it Wanna switched... Try that one? It switched to Apple Maps, so it didn't actually use Google Maps for that. Uh, so if I hit the Google Maps icon, oh, let's see here. There we go. You can see the, the look of the map is a little bit different here. Now, to search within the Google Maps, you actually have to use this icon here. Okay, so. Ah, of course, we have to enable microphone settings. So that will give us the option to actually speak out a, um, uh, an address or a business that we can navigate to. Um, but it'll be the Google Assistant used through the internet only in Google Maps, and that's on an, uh, an Apple phone. So it's a little bit, uh, that part of it's a little bit confusing, uh, but just know that you have the option to use Google Maps or Apple Maps. And if you're wanting to use the voice recognition button on the steering wheel, it's pretty much always gonna be Apple Maps. All right, um, this is just streaming audio. So if I tap this here, this will bring up streaming audio from the internet um, at that pr particular radio station. So I'm gonna cancel that, there we go. Don't need to listen to that right now. And uh, Skype is Skype, same as always, and nothing changed there, and a couple of other applications. So these, are, these aren't gonna all be here uh, when you connect up your phone. You're, you know, you're gonna have the default ones. You're gonna have basically everything you see here. Uh, these are all default with Apple phones. Um, and then you'll have your calendar, your settings, and then everything else here. So the Google Maps and all that, that's all stuff that was added in by Alec, uh, applications that he uses on a fairly regular basis. All right, so I wanna look at the Apple uh, Maps screen here specifically, because this is what you're definitely gonna have if you have an iPhone. Um, so a couple things to note. So if I tap the screen, uh, I can kind of bring up some of these other uh, icons. They'll go away after a moment, but you've got your, your, your zoom option right here. Um, now this one, unfortunately, unlike the Google Maps, you can't use uh, pinch and spread for zooming in and out, uh, but you can, of course, manipulate the screen and move it around. Um, and if you want to zoom in and out, you just use the buttons there. This button up here just changes whether or not, or whether or not you want to have north always up or, or you know, which way the vehicle is facing always up. The 3D button allows you to put it into a three-dimensional perspective. Uh, so that's done there. This button right here just kind of full screens everything again. We can back out of there, move it around. It's, it's basically the same as moving the screen around with your finger, which is honestly easier. So that button's kind of useless. Uh, this one here brings up um, the report screen. So it's pretty cool. So if you see an accident or some sort of hazard on the road, or maybe there's a police speed check, you can quickly choose one of those um, and it'll then you know tell other drivers uh, 
in the same area of those things. Search, of course, is just going to take up or is going to bring up the uh, the search bar here, and you can choose what type of thing you want to search search for. Uh, if we hit this Where button here, like it just brings up uh, Siri, and if you bring up the keyboard, you can type in an address uh, directly from there. Obviously, if you're driving, you want to stick to just using Siri. You can either hit that button there or just hit the voice recognition button on the steering wheel. If you're looking for parking, for instance, though, you would hit the parking button there, and of course, you could choose a parking area close to your location. And then the destinations box here basically just takes you to destinations that you've been to before. Uh, you can kind of scroll through them. Now I'm just going to demonstrate a couple of ways that you can navigate to different locations. I did this with the Android one as well. So I'm going to try to do the same thing with this and see if Siri is capable of the same sort of uh, accuracy. So let's give it a shot. Navigate to Walmart in White Rock. Getting directions to Walmart Supercenter. All right, and there it goes. So you can say it just as naturally as that. You don't have to say it in a specific way necessarily. So we're going to try a different way. Take me to Walmart in White Rock. Getting directions to Walmart Supercenter. Perfect. So it did it again. Same place. Excellent. Give me some directions to a Walmart in White Rock. Getting directions to Walmart Supercenter. All right, so the only thing I saw different here between Siri and Google Assistant was that one of the times when I searched with Google Assistant, it actually gave me some uh, information about the route, uh, like the traffic and information about it, uh, that sort of thing. But other than that, it's uh, basically the same, very much the same as far as capability. All right, so that's basically how you can do some of the navigation setup very easily by voice. But one thing I did with the Android Auto uh, on my last video was I tested out the ability for it to recognize and provide answers to questions that you wouldn't or ordinarily think uh, to ask a assistant in a car. So let's give that a shot. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to have it try to call a business uh, that, it, that I know Alec doesn't have a, uh, this business in his contact list. And we're going to see if it can find the correct business location and the phone number and place the call. Let's give it a shot. Call Little Caesars Pizza on Promontory Way. The only option I found is Little Caesars on Promontory Road. Do you want to call that one? Yes. Calling Little Caesars. Okay, of course we'll hang up. Okay, so that worked. That's the first test. Okay, second test uh, was going to be a question about traffic jams. So let's give that a shot. Are there any traffic jams between here and Surrey? Directions to where? Surrey. Yes. <laughs> All right. So that's funny. So it's picking up Surrey as Siri. So I'm going to have to try a different location. Are there any traffic jams between here and Whistler? Uh-oh, there's a problem. Please try again. Hmm. Okay. Are there any traffic jams between here and Delta? Uh-oh, there's a problem. Please try again. Are there any traffic jams? No, that's not going to work. Navigate to Delta. Getting directions to Delta. Okay. So the question about traffic jams unfortunately didn't do anything. I tried several different options. It just wasn't happening. Now, on the Android phone, uh, basically it just provided me directions when I asked it for uh, traffic jams. But of course the directions do include information about traffic jams. So it made sense. Siri didn't quite figure out a way to respond to that. So that's fine. Next thing is a mathematical question. What's the square root of 842,946? The square root of 842,946. So it looks like I can do this just fine. 918.1209. Interesting that it said approximately. <laughs> it either is or it isn't. All right, let's uh, try one more. How many liters per 100 kilometers is 47 miles per gallon? Sorry, I can't show the result to you while you're in the car. What's 5.3 liters per 100 kilometers in miles per gallon? Sorry, I can't show the result to you okay. while you're in the car. So it's just not capable of doing that either, unfortunately. That's fine. What's the population of Canada? 
In 2021, the population of Canada was 36,991,981. All right. What's the weather going to be like on Sunday? Looks like rain on Sunday. Daytime temperatures will hover around 7 degrees, with overnight lows around 2 degrees. All right. So one thing I was noticing that is when I, whenever I did something on the screen here, what's the population of Canada? You'll notice it actually doesn't, In 2021, the population it doesn't give me a readout of what I said. So if I said something and it didn't recognize it properly, I don't have a quick visual uh, to basically cancel and start again. I have to wait till it says whether or not it understood correctly. Um, so that's unfortunate. So that's one, one other place where Android Auto seemed to do a little bit better. So as far as the capabilities go between Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, Android Auto definitely seems to have a, a superior voice recognition capability, a better AI. Uh, as far as mapping goes, Google is technically going to be a little bit better than Apple Maps, although not much. They're, they're almost exactly the same capability now. Uh, but I don't see any option to put this into a satellite mode. So that's one huge benefit uh, that Android Auto has over Apple CarPlay. It's just no, no way to put that into a satellite image. Now, on the Google Maps on here, I'm not even sure if you can do it. Yeah, you can actually check that out. So with Google Maps, you can get the satellite image even on an iPhone. So that's kind of cool. Um, and I believe it also gives you the perspective mode as well. Yeah, right here, we got north up, and then here's our perspective mode. So that's pretty cool. All right, that's Apple CarPlay in a nutshell. If this helped you out at all, please don't hesitate to comment below, say thank you, ask a question, don't forget to hit the like button, and consider subscribing as well. Every subscription does help. So yeah, maybe you can help me out as well. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.